Hi everyone, this is Axel again and welcome to the third episode of our series about uh, how to create or develop a blogging application using structure. Um, in the first two um, episodes I showed you how to create a simple data model for blog posts uh, and create a simple um, blog post details page and a list page um, using a simple database repeater. Um, both pages were imported um, uh, from the internet uh, as a static template. Um, in this third episode, I'd like to show you how to extend the list page um, by a search um, field or a search functionality to filter these block elements by um, a search term a user enters in, uh, in an input field. But um, to start, we'd like, or I'd like to show you how to import the application state as it was at the end at, uh, of the, um, the, um, the last episode. In order to do that, uh, I'm already logged into the dashboard page uh, or into the um, structure application on the dashboard page. And I, I just enter or paste the URL of the zip file um, which contains the full application. I click on import from URL and structure downloads the file, extracts it and um, creates everything we need to um, be at this in the same state with the application as it was last time, um, uh, including pages, files, the schema. Um, so yeah, now we can go to the pages and we see the two pages we created uh, during the first two um, tutorials. Um, okay, now to we want to uh, extend this list functionality or in, in, and, and use this search functionality to filter these the list of blog posts. In order to do that, we have to identify the element here, the input field in the tree. It's this input element. Um, now let's uh, open this overview page in a separate tab um, just to test the search functionality. If I enter something here, nothing will happen uh, no matter what I do. That uh, is caused by uh, the fact that this is a static single input field and it has no form element around it. Uh, so the browser will just ignore everything uh, we do with this input element. Um, to, um, to turn that into a dynamic field, um, there are a couple of options. Um, one of the most, uh, <clears throat> one of the oldest and most simple options is to just um, wrap this input field in a form element. Um, let's also uh, include the go button here and use this whole div input group element and I click on uh, with a mouse right mouse button use a wrap element in a form element and um, I will just assign um, the right permissions so that uh, you can or everyone can see also the form element and its content um, I can just apply visibility settings here in this dialog, make it visible to public and to authenticated users as well. Um, and now we have a simple web form. Uh, standard web forms, web uh, form elements, will cause the, the browser to submit a, a GET request. So it's just a, a new request to the same page, but uh, they will append um, the value entered into the input field um, and all we have to do to enable that is to uh, assign a name to this input field for example uh, Q for query and um, yeah that's it and let's test it um, and now let's enter test here hit return and now we see the browser does a get request to the same page and all we have to do now is um, in the back end use the value of this queue parameter to filter um, the, the database elements. So we go back to the pages, identify the repeater. To, to find a repeater in a page 
you could either use this active elements tab here um, and um, just go to the properties here or if you want to uh, see also the context of this element you can do it in the pages tree um, slide out and just click on one of these elements uh, this is a re the repeated element click here and then you can um, you can see that this is the special element which has a colored icon and we can also here go to the query and data binding dialog now in order to filter the list of blog posts by um, the the uh, search term entered by the users we have to um, extend this query a little bit um, and we have to replace find by search uh, because find is for exact queries and uh, search is for inexact and case insensitive queries you can read it in the documentation um, on our support portal i will uh, in a couple of seconds i will just go to this support portal and show you um, uh, where you can find this information so i can add or i will add another um, parameter here um, so we just filter um, blog posts by the uh, text attribute and we use uh, request.q so Request here is just a reference key to, um, to uh, access the data of the request object. Um, and request.q will return the uh, value of the Q parameter, the Q request parameter. Save it and uh, as you can see, the list of the elements in the preview um, is empty. And if we go to the um, um, the, 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 the page in the preview all, as well because test is not contained in any of the texts of um, the, any of the blog posts. But if we enter text or um, happy or something like that, then we get the filtered content that also works with a single, uh, single letter like for example A or S uh, and so on. Um, now maybe it, it, it's um, handy to keep the um, the search term entered here uh, for a subsequent uh, request. So again, we go to the input field, and now we can replace or we can add the um, a template expressions uh, template expression in the same way that um, was used to display. Uh, dynamic content on the website side we can of course use the same template expression uh, expressions to um, set the value or to render uh, the value of an HTML attribute um, so we just enter request.q and reload the demo page and we get exactly what we entered before and um, now we have a simple uh, search functionality for our blog posts um okay that ah i i promised to go to the uh documentation um in structure you will find a context sensitive um uh, documentation link just click on this blue help icon in the upper right corner and um, you will land on a, a specific article which is typically helpful um, in the context of the area in, in in the structure application so here you find uh, an intro article as well as some links um, there's a tree uh, topic tree and also because it's a it's a graph also a very graphical um, or graphy uh, display of our content articles articles you can click through them uh, okay here are some here are a lot of uh, topics and here you find uh, all the um, the built-in functions um, you might rather use the search for for this um, um, because there are a lot of articles here I just use the search function the search function is very similar to the find function I used before find is for exact search and search is for 
case insensitive or inexact search. Okay, that was it. That was um, extending a, a more or less a static application by um, a search um, input field and to, by, to filter the content displayed on the page. Um, as always, if you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to, ch to the channel. Um, if you have questions or comments, please use the comment section below. Uh, stay tuned, there will be more uh, tutorial videos and more episodes to, to come in the, in the future. And um, yeah, stay tuned and have a good day. Bye bye.